But this is when we think about uh, direction and magnitude. Or if you'd like to think about it that way, in polar form, right? That's the direction and magnitude gives you. We also need to know how to calculate this in component form, right? Component form. Now, you may remember, or maybe you just have in your book, what the defini definition is in 2D, what the formula is uh, in 2D for the dot product in 2D. But what I want to actually do is prove it for you. Okay, how can we prove that this is going to give you this object over here, which you could more or less guess based on what it looks like in 2D, but how can we actually establish that fact? So here's what I'd like you to do. Draw with me a diagram that's going to have some arbitrary A and some arbitrary B, and I'm going to give you sort of a, a two to three minute head start because you did this proof in the opposite direction within extension one most likely, okay? Coming from component form and then using which trigonometric rule do you think was handy to come up with this definition? The cosine rule, right? You use the cosine rule in a triangle to get from the component form definition over to this one. Could you draw a diagram that would help you go in the opposite direction? Remember, it's just really thinking in back in two dimensions, okay? Let me give you a bit of a head start. I will draw a diagram on the board that will begin not very helpfully, but hopefully it will be a foundation for you, okay? Have a go, and then in two or three minutes I'll show you how I'm going to do it. Okay, get started. Uh, let me see if I can give you a little bit of a hand. And please, at the point at which you're like, oh, now I see where to go, right? Abandon me, like, you, you don't need to go as slow as I do to get to the full proof. What I'm going to try and get to is, from this definition, which comes from what I want the dot product to mean, and this diagram, I'm going to add some things onto this diagram which will help me get to, well, how do I work it out? If, for example, I don't know what that angle theta is between the two, right? That's quite a tricky thing to do. We can do it just out of my, my x's, my y's, and my z's, my coordinates. Here's how I'm going to do it. I've begun my diagram with my a and b. By the way, of course, our a and our b may not actually be together, right? That just could be anywhere. But in order to consider the dot product, we want to know what the angle is between them. So we just put their tails together. Remember that? Okay, so that's why the diagram looks the way that it does. Now, why have I added in uh, this red vector? What's the red vector called, by the way? On my scheme, what would you call that red vector? Uh, you could call it the resultant vector after putting uh, these two things together. But in a careful way, I guess the label would just be a, B, right? So I could, I could call it that, which I might just do. A, B. Uh, the reason why it's helpful to me, because I saw it on like two thirds of your diagrams, but not everyone's, is because if I'm going to use the cosine rule, the cosine rule relates three sides, the three lengths of those sides in a triangle together. Do you agree with that? So therefore, I, I need to form a triangle with my two vectors. Now, I don't know the magnitude of A, B. I don't yet, okay? But I, I can get it in terms of A, and B. Now, maybe you already are like, I know what to write in there, but if you're looking at that geometrically and thinking, I'm not sure how I would get to this thing over here, think about how we've gotten A from an origin, right? Maybe I should label that there for you. Call this OA and call this OB. How would I create this vector? What would I do? Have a think. Now, for me, there's, um, there's some constructions missing. There's a parallelogram always hiding where you've got two vectors going on, right? So for instance, I could say, mm, let's put on here, the about the best way to do this. I'm gonna put it on here. If I put that vector over there, that dotted one, right? On the basis of the information that I've provided to you, what would be the value or the label for that vector over there? Look where I've constructed it. Yeah, it's going to be negative A, right? Uh, same magnitude, but opposite direction. Do you agree? So negative A, like so. Now the reason why that's helpful is because I can then say, if I start from O, go to B, and then follow whatever this vector is, negative A, then that gives me this resultant vector. Do you agree? But look at the red vector, AB, that I wanted, and this new dotted line red vector that I've just drawn, Clearly, they're the same vector, right? They're not in the same position, but displacement-wise, they're doing the same thing. It's the whole point of the parallelogram law, yeah? So therefore, I can say, well, this is also AB. 
just in a different spot. It's O whatever you'd call this, C or something like that, okay? But for my purposes, I just want a magnitude. I just want a magnitude. So therefore I can say these two magnitudes are gonna be the same because opposite sides in a parallelogram are equal. I could call it the magnitude of B minus A, but just to be convenient for my algebra later on, I'm going to call it the magnitude of A minus B because when you take the magnitude, it's gonna be the same whichever direction you're looking in. Do you agree with that? Um, I could just point the arrow in the opposite direction and you get the same deal. Okay, so now how do I get from here to something relating all of the components? Well, let's just go ahead and write, and come back to this now. Let's just go ahead and write what the cosine rule looks like, what it tells us about the sides and the angle in this triangle. Have a think with me, right? How would you normally write the cosine rule? What's it normally look like? C squared. C squared? equals, you could start with cos theta, you could start, there's lots of different perspectives which are all equally valid, but in our case, I guess I'd probably say c squared, this is like the side opposite the angle that I have, because I only have one angle, c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos c. And I like it that way because it's closest to Pythagoras' theorem, which is what cosine rule is, right? Now let's write that, c squared, a squared, and so on, in the context of this, right? So I guess I would write, be careful here, right? Uh, AB, right? Its magnitude squared. There's my C squared. You okay with that? That equals two. I'm going to do the rest of the cosine rule now. I've got this side and this side over here, so they would be the magnitude of OA squared. Then I've got, I don't know why my squared is so high up there. I've got the magnitude of OB also squared. And then what comes next? This last part. Minus two. two. My two in, my two sides that include the angle, which in this case are OA and OB. And then the, the bit that gives the cosine rule its name, cos of the included angle, which I've just conveniently called theta. So far, so good. Okay, so I've got all the magnitudes there, but now let's turn it into like how can I get to this from this rather to this right to component form. What's the expressions for all of these things? So I'm going to turn this into my vector notation. So I've got, let's see here. This one here is a minus b, I think is what I called it. Is that okay? Little a, little b squared. This one's just little a squared, little b squared. You can sort of go on from here to little a, little b cos theta. But now I want you to go back to our very first lesson. This is how we're going to get to component form, right? Our very first lesson in 3D vectors, we used Pythagoras to work out a distance formula, right? That's, that's all this thing is. What is the distance between two arbitrary vectors with different coordinates? I'll give you a clue. There's a lot of things that are squared. Think about Pythagoras' theorem. Do you remember? didn't have Pythag Pythagorean triples, it had a Pythagorean quadruple, right? There were three here and then there was one on the other side, okay? What's it gonna look like? You gotta compare components, right? X components, compare those. Remember we divide it up into our X direction, then we do it for our Y direction, like so, and then we do it in our Z direction. If you popped a square root over the whole thing, that's just your distance formula, right? But I don't need to do that because I'm actually squared up here. What's that equal to? How do we work out the distance of, or the magnitude rather, of just a single vector? It's the same thing again, isn't it? It's just that um, each of these is gonna be zero because I'm comparing to the origin, right? So this is gonna be, take a breath, <clears throat> uh, xa squared plus yb y a squared, sorry, getting my mix letters mixed up, z a squared, that's what I get from here. I'm gonna have to just rehearse the whole thing for b, so I'm gonna get x b squared, y b squared, and z b squared, minus two lots of, and then I'm gonna have to complete this, right? You see this here? Now, think about this. Pause for a moment before you keep on writing. I've been turning as much as I can of this cosine rule into component form. Component form, right? I'm not gonna do it to this last bit. I'm not gonna turn 
the 2AB cos theta into component form. Can anyone tell me why? Ah, because that's actually the thing that I wanted, remember? It's like, oh good, if I can find out what this is equal to, and all the components will be on the other side, then I'm done. So don't get rid of that thing, that's pretty much already in the form that I wanted. Happy? So I'm going to write just to a, b, oops, cos theta, okay? Now, there's a little bit of algebra to do here, so I'm going to pause and let you try and take over from here. I know it looks long and awkward, but actually it's quite routine once you get in the rhythm of expanding all the things, cancelling all the things. Can you see how very many things are going to cancel? So let me give you 10-15 seconds. I know I've written a lot of stuff on the board just to catch up, and then I'll show you what this is going to look like and what will cancel. Okay? So what I've done is two things. Number one, we'll start with the right hand side because it's actually easier. On the right hand side, I actually have not changed anything, but I've just color coded my X's and my Y's and my Z's. Is that okay? because I know on the left hand side when I expand, and this is the second thing I do, when I expand this garbled mess, I'm gonna get these same terms, an xa squared and an xb squared from these binomial expansions over here. So now, we're just gonna have fun canceling. Are you ready? Okay, cancel, 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 cancel. You can see I've done it with the colors to make it easier for you. My y's cancel. Here you go, the z's. Being a bit lazy there. Okay, so what do we get left with? We can even cancel a little bit further, can't we? Because there is now, looking at the three terms left over here and the one term left over there, there's a common factor on the left-hand side and right-hand side, namely negative two, right? So let's uh, get rid of all those negative twos, which means I get rid of this negative two. And what you get left with on the right-hand side is how we, by definition, describe the dot product. Right in three dimensions, just like in two dimensions. So I can just replace the right-hand side with, I'm gonna write it on the left just for convenience, a dot b, right? And I just get what's left on the left-hand side, which can you see the extension from the dot product formula from 2D, right? Let me just cover this green bit here. There it is, right there. xa, xb plus ya, yb, right? There it is in 2D. Ta-da, now we're in 3D, right? So let's just go ahead and write that, xa, XB, multiply your X's, multiply your Y's, and multiply your Z's, and you're there. So this, this is our formula in component form. It is essential. The syllabus tells us you can't just um, use it, you also need to know where it comes from, right, and be able to go in both directions.